again. Yeah, in my 24 years, it's usually the defense is ahead. Um, I think that's pretty much been the case this year as well, but I, and I see the offense um, really the last two practices, you know, really making some pretty good strides. Um, it's also hard just, you know, early on when to decide that because the installations, there's still a lot of new stuff going in every single, you know, day on both sides of the ball. We're a little bit more experienced on the defensive side, but, but I'm pleased. I thought the last two days has been very competitive back and forth. James, you're about midway through with practice. Where are you with respect to the quarterback competition, and do you have a time frame now that that opener is kind of creeping close to us? Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we literally are, are just finishing up the installations, getting all the installs in on, on offense and defense, and, and we do that on purpose, kind of spread it out, and it's complementary, so the offensive coaches know what's going in on defense, and defensive coaches know what's going on, on offense, so you can prepare the guys to come out and be successful. Um, you know, and making sure that the right amounts, you know, because it, it compounds. So it's not just what you're putting on, or putting in on defense, it's what you're seeing on offense. Um, so, you know, when it comes to the quarterbacks, we're going to get through the installs first and then just kind of go from there. But um, obviously we're evaluating everything. I think both Clifford and Levis are doing some really nice things. The two young kids are starting to get more comfortable too. So, um, you know, we, we've been pleased, but we haven't had one discussion yet as a staff on, on making decisions. James, how does Rasheed Walker handle himself against Detour and that collection of defensive events? How does that make him better? And additionally, uh, anyone separating themselves at Lake Park? Yeah, I think, um, I think obviously going against the defensive line and specifically the defensive ends that we have, um, I think it, it, it's nothing but a positive. You know, uh, Rasheed's doing some really nice things. Um, obviously, Will Fries is, is doing some really good things. Dez has had a great offseason. Yeah, that's, that's been a real positive for us in, in Dez Holmes. Um, and then, obviously, Caden Wallace, you know, a young kid that we think very highly of that, that's doing some good things, too. So, um, you know, at guard, I think you're going to see a rotation. I think you're going to see all three of those guys play a lot in, in Gonzalez and, and, and Miranda and, um, and um, Thorpe. Thorpe, thank you very much. How do I forget, CJ? Um, I think you're going to see all three of those guys play a lot. And then we also got to make sure Miranda has the ability to play center for us as well. Uh, but th that's the one of the challenges right now is he needs rep reps at center, but it's hard to do that while he's competing for the guard job too. So yeah, that's that's the fine line of kind of getting all those reps balanced out. Well, we, we have uh, you know, we have pounded that pretty hard. You know, Matt's had a Matt's had a busy off season. Um, obviously, you know, Coach Bowen's experience there as well. who's the line coach at the University of Maryland. Uh, we've had two NFL O line coaches come and visit with us and, and play can pay a considerable amount of time with us. Um, you know, and we'll we'll do that again. We got another guy coming back. Um, just asking a bunch of questions little details where we can get better and continue to grow and and even if it's just adding one more tool in these guys tool belts so will fries they'll give them one more tool that doesn't have to become his primary but gives them another answer against you know different defensive ends so um, I'm pleased with it it's still a work in progress and I think the other part of that is also how we call the game you know, I think I think we got to call the game um, in a way that helps those guys, you know, build confidence as well as the season goes on. So by the time we get to the midpoint of the season, we feel like it's a strength. Of the the quarterbacks that have been in your program for a few years still need to learn when they're actually really competing for this confidence. Well, I, I think there's a difference between, you know, getting reps in, in practice and talking about situational football, um, how much we spend, you know, time talking about four minute, two minute. Um, you know, uh, drive starters, you know, earn first downs, kind of how they all play out differently and the things that, that factor into it. I think there's a difference between talking about all those things and doing it in practice. It's another being comfortable enough that you're just not out there in a the stadium, in Beaver Stadium, just running plays, that you understand, you know, why we're running the play. 
you know, if it's third and eight and we're across the 50, how that's different than compared to third and eight on the minus 30 yard line and, and things like that. And I think early on, there's just so many things going through your mind in terms of the play, the defense, that the situation that you're in um, doesn't always factor in. You want to get to the point where you know the play without even thinking about it. You can identify the defense and then have a, a really good awareness of what situation you're in. So to me, that's the, that's the big step. There's that one step where the game slows down to you when you can start to anticipate what the defense is going to do. And I think the next step in development is really understanding situational football and kind of how to manage those things. That's the safety competition shape it up. Good. You know, our, our conversation the other day as a staff is we think we got, you know, probably, you know, better depth there than we've had in the past in terms of four guys that we, we feel really good about. I think Wade's had a, a really good camp. I think Sutherland's had a really good camp. I think Risker's had a, a really uh, good camp. And then you guys, you know, you'll see GT. Not only is he a veteran and, and playing a lot of football for us, but a you know, great leader, very mature. But you're also going to see he's changed his body. He, he looks great. He is ripped up. His body fat's way down. He's, he's moving really well, playing with a lot of confidence right now. So we like the four guys that we got. Well, what are some of the things you see from, from Gary Taylor that make him a great leader? And, and how has he improved since the end of last year? I think it's consistency and it's confidence. You know, his approach, his maturity, both on and off the field, the consistency in his habits and the consistency in his behaviors, I think is, is the biggest thing for him. And then obviously the confidence that comes with playing as much football as he's, as, he, as he's played for us now. I think it's also, you know, being able to watch a guy like Marcus Allen, being able to be, you know, a good friend and teammate of Trace McSorley and see how they impacted the program. So it's kind of his time. It's, it's his turn to take that next step. And, because he's had, had such a mature approach off the field, he's really able to pour, you know, 90% of all his energy and focus into football because he's really handled all his business, you know, off the field academically, you know, socially, spiritually, all of that. Yeah, we got three more scheduled. There was still some guys that you could tell, you know, Beaver Stadium kind of was, was different for them. So we're going to get in there three more times. Um, you know, I think I think we are long and fast on defense. I mean, it's it is very very apparent. Um, it's impressive our, our length, our athleticism, and our speed on defense right now. Um, but we need it. We need we need to be in that stadium. We still got a, young, a lot of young players that haven't played in there under the lights, prime time, those types of things. Uh, but I think it was very valuable. The next time we do it, we'll have the coaches up in the booth. Uh, on, this, on the opposite sidelines, and then the next time we'll do it, we'll literally go pure game day, coaches in the booth, on the same sideline, offensive bench, bench, defensive bench, signalers, dummy signalers, the whole operation, so build up. So by the time we get to game one, everybody's you know very, very comfortable with how um, sideline and game game organization goes. James, in the last couple of days, we're looking at that, yeah, that's been going on for a while. Um, you know, we're, we're honored to be a part of that conversation. Um, obviously, when any of these things like this come up, and, and they've, these opportunities have come up really the last couple of years, I'd probably say the last three or four years, um, you know, we consider, um, you know, we consider all these options that we think are in, you know, the university's best interest, the athletic department's best interest, and our football program's best interest. Obviously, you know, it's great that we're in that conversation, but no decisions have been made at this time. As you can imagine, there's a lot that goes into it, not just with Penn State, but with the Big Ten and a lot of other things that factor into it. So, um, you know, at this point, we haven't made a decision, but, you know, once we have all the details, then I, we can make a decision at that point. It's hard to make a decision when we don't know all the gymnastics that happen. Hey, hey, James, you talked about the, over here, the depth and safety. Can you talk about, compare the depth now versus when you first got here six years ago? Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, you know, I, I, I believe that, you know, that, that first year, and really that second year, in a lot of ways, I think, you know, maybe have been our best job, you know, in, in terms of maximizing what we had. Uh, as, as you guys know, we had a bunch of really good players and really good kids, but... 
it was just it was, it was different. You know, when you get here, and I think we had six or seven scholarship offensive linemen before we moved guys over um, on defense and safety at really every position. Um, it was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. So to think about where we're at now, we're young, um, but the depth and the talent and the competition um, is exciting. We got a better familiarity for Penn State, obviously now for the conference, uh, for all of it. You know, for the different venues, um, it is. It's different. It's funny. It seems like it seems like a hundred years ago, going to Dublin, Ireland, and and, and, and you know playing Central Florida. That was that was Billy O'Brien's going away present to me. Uh, you know, go out of town and then leave us with a trip to Dublin, Ireland, and then Spider retires. I mean, geez. <laughs> talk about a nightmare in the last you know in the last few minutes but um but it just you know we're just obviously at a different point you know we're just at a different point in our program but all those experiences um, and all those things we, we have gone through i think have got us to this point and they've all been learning experiences very appreciative very proud of what we've been able to do but, but we still got a lot of work to do. i just got done telling the team i'm very proud of how they've practiced how they've competed we made some adjustments in the off season the camp uh, to our summer training, and I, I like where we're at right now. So. James, you've, you've meant wide receivers been coming along to other practices and and put part of it kind of so Good. We you know we got we got a lot of talent. We got a lot of depth. We got a lot of speed. Um, there's a lot of confidence. We're playing with a lot of confidence right now. I thought they did a really good job this summer getting with the quarterbacks and throwing enough balls that they could build that chemistry. I think Coach Parker is a seasoned veteran wide receiver coach, played the position, coached the position, been around good programs, been around good coaches. His experience as an interim head coach and all that kind of stuff, you, you see it, you feel it. Um, so, you know, he's made a great impact. I'm, I'm a huge fan of his. Um, him and Jay Wan and, and Coach Lorig, you know, have done a really good job. They've, they've been great hires and great additions to our program. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. you. <coughs>